Let's talk about hot tubs. Perhaps you recently bought one or you've had one for a while and you never really felt you understood well the maintenance cycle or perhaps you think your hot tub care fundamentals could use some brushing up on. Well, I'd like to help you with that, and I think I can help you with that. Now, it's been a while since uh, hot tub orientations were my primary job, but I still think I'm going to be able to deliver some information for you here that will be useful. First of all, I find that the modern hot tub industry is... It's probably different than what the average person is expecting when they go shopping for a new hot tub. When I go shopping for a used car, I'm a little bit expecting a slick salesman to come out and do his thing and try to sell me something. And it's exactly like that when you buy a hot tub. It, a lot of people aren't expecting that. You're going to get sold too when you go to buy a hot tub. And hot tubs are expensive these days. You can spend $10,000, $20,000 on, on a new hot tub. But the reality is, is once you get that and they make the sale and you get your hot tub delivered, oh boy, do they care about you a lot less. And I'm not trying to be a jerk to you hot tub guys. I know a lot of you. But the reality is, is that you do care about more about making the sale than you do care about the after sale care of the customer. And the reality is, is that's where most of the relationship needs to happen. The customer gets the hot tub, but they don't know what to do with it. They truly don't. And that's what this video is for. Let's get you started down the right path. Um, there's so many things to cover. I'm never going to be able to cover them all in one video. But like I said, let's get you going down the right path and see if I can't just kind of point you in the right direction with this information. Um, let's start with something basic, which is to say, how often should you drain and refill this hot tub? And you you should be doing that about every three months on average. Plan that out. You should be draining and refilling every three months. That presumes that you have a good care to the quality of your water. If your water turns green or putrid, drain it and refill it. That's not kind of a manage it with, you know, chemical situation. In a swimming pool, you might do that more because draining and refilling is quite costly. In a hot tub, it's small enough. If you mess it up, just go ahead and drain it and refill it. With a hot tub, because it's so small, you'll find that the chemicals fluctuate wildly. Swimming pools are not like that. They're large and their volumes are large and it takes a long time for the chemistry values to change. In a hot tub, it's not not like that at all. You Even just using the hot tub can wildly affect the, the chemistry. So you're going to have to be pretty on top of it when it comes to testing the water. So let's talk about that for a moment. The, you know, the initial fill and chemical balance. That's kind of a very important part of owning a hot tub. And a lot of you might be here just for this information. Initial fill and balance. The first thing I want you to know is that you should be using a pre-filter. Unless you're using a supremely clean water supply, you should be using a pre-filter attachment on the garden hose that you fill your hot tub with. Any opportunity to remove an impurity from the water before it ends up in the hot tub is a good idea. You don't want to have to add chemicals to the hot tub to rectify a problem that you introduced in the in the supply line. So a pre-filter goes a long way. They last a long time, so you could buy one and use it over and over again. And I highly recommend it for pretty much every hot tub fill. So go ahead and pick yourself up a pre-filter. Um, now that the, the hot tub is full, you're going to turn it on and start to circulate the water and begin to heat it. But we have the initial chemical balance to consider. So right away, we need to discuss the testing of water chemistry. There's a bunch of stuff you need to know about water chemistry. I think you probably already know enough about hot tubs or pools to know that chemistry and water chemistry is a thing that you're supposed to be on top of and probably the biggest hurdle for the average hot tub owner when you're first getting used to this. You don't really know this stuff and so you kind of feel overwhelmed looking at all of it. Let's see if we can break it down into some more bite-sized stuff and maybe even identify the chronological order of operations, which I think helps a lot of people out. So the first thing you need to know is that you're going to need to test the water. And let's talk about that for a second because it'll be confusing for you. You've seen test strips. I think you, you know what I'm talking about. You dunk a little thing in, then you read it, boom, test strip. Super fast, super easy, pretty cheap. It's not a free lunch, so what you're giving up is accuracy. Those things aren't super accurate. So I do endorse the use of test strips because they are fast and easy, great for quick checks, and you should be checking your chemistry often, especially when you're a new hot tub owner. Uh, but they're not super accurate, and they're very subjective as well. You know, reading the pH off of a color strip is, I mean, pretty inaccurate at best. So 
getting a local pool and spa store with a water lab to do a free water analysis, that's a great bargain. You should totally take that up if you find a local water lab to work with, because then you can get some detailed information about what's going on in your water. And that's a, that's a really important point. You should not do anything to your hot tub without first knowing what's going on in the water. At no point should you be guessing as to what you need to add to this hot tub. So the way that I would address this first is the you're going to take your water to a local water lab. You're going to have the water tested. You could use a strip at home. It's not as good. If you want quality at home testing, you, you know the the red and yellow droppers that you might have seen your grandparents using with a, their swimming pool? Turns out those are actually still to this day the best option for you for at home water testing. Taylor Technologies makes test kits of various sizes and degrees, and these are the gold standard for at-home testing. And I would recommend highly, if you want to test uh, and be completely independent, not have to deal with a local water lab, or if you don't have a local water lab available to you, at-home testing with a Taylor test kit is as good as you can get for pool and spa water testing, water chemistry testing. And I do highly recommend that you pick that up. So the first thing that you're going to need to test the water for is the total alkalinity. There's kind of like... There's a bunch of stuff you need to know, and we're glossing over a lot of it here because I'm just giving you the bare bones of what you need to get this hot tub up and running right now. The number one thing you need to get right first is the total alkalinity. And the the range that you're supposed to work with is kind of the 60 parts per, per million to 180 parts per million range. And... <clears throat> With hot tubs, they tend to run a little bit on the high side. There's a lot of stuff that will make your pH and your alkalinity high in a hot tub. So it's normal in a hot tub environment to be running on the upper end of that range. But you can't be off the end of the spectrum. You really can't have an alkalinity of 240, 300. Something like this is going to cause problems for your water. Now, we're bordering on some pretty intense technical subjects here. So I have to just gloss over it and just tell you the range is 60 to 180. We need to establish this first. You want to probably end up in the 120 to 180 range. And I'll get to the reasons why later. But for now, because we're moving as quickly as possible. 120 to 180 is the first parameter you need to establish. And so you test your water, you see where you're at now. If you were at, let's say 60 parts per million total alkalinity, that's not high enough. I would want you to push that up 120 minimum or perhaps 160, 180. It would depend on the pH, which is the second thing that we're going to need to set. So we tested the alkalinity first. We want around 120, something like that. The pH will follow the alkalinity. As your pH goes up, your alkalinity goes up. As your pH goes down, your alkalinity goes down. The alkalinity's function is it is the buffer for the pH. If you had no alkalinity at all, your pH would fluctuate wildly. So you add alkal total alkalinity, 120 parts per million, and that will help to buffer the movement of the pH. That's why we set the alkalinity first, which we did. Now we have to set the pH. You're aiming for 7.2 to 7.8. This is the range, you know, but 7.4 is kind of the ideal number you're shooting for. And you set the alkalinity first, then you set the pH. As you, as you move one, the other moves as well. And I want you to come back to my YouTube channel and to learn more about pH and alkalinity and how these things work together. And I have a website where I talk about this stuff in depth for now because we're just trying to move quickly. I just want you to know that the alkalinity comes first, set that variable, then follow up by the pH. You're not going to remember all this stuff, but you can come back to these vi this video. And that's why I'm referencing the values so that you can reference this time and again and learn the order of operations. We, ch we tested the alkalinity first and we set that. Then we established the pH in the correct range. Next, we're going to make sure the calcium hardness is in the right range. Some people think, well, maybe I don't need calcium hardness in my hot tub. I've heard people say this before. And the problem is, is that with no hardness to the water at all, or aka very soft water, you're going to be highly, highly inclined to develop suds and undesirable foam in the hot tub, something you, you don't really want. And the best way to avoid that is to set the calcium hardness to the right range. 200 to 400 parts per million is what we're aiming for here. So that is three parameters that we set so far. And now we're ready to talk about the sanitizer. In pools, it's commonly chlorine. 
in hot tubs, it's commonly bromine. Just to touch on this subject, because again, it's a complicated one, but we're trying to move quickly. I, I, you can use either in a hot tub. You can use chlorine or bromine. It's up to you. And there's benefits and disadvantages to each. But to summarize to the most extreme degree, I describe bromine as the sanitizer for of, of choice in hot tubs as kind of like beginner mode and chlorine as the sanitizer of choice in hot tubs for advanced mode. Perhaps you could get somewhat better results with chlorine versus bromine. And by that, I mean, perhaps the water would look a little bit brighter and sparkle a little bit more versus a somewhat more dull or listless look that a bromine hot tub could have. Uh, also smell. I think people don't necessarily dislike the smell of chlorine, but some people do dislike the smell, smell of bromine. So that's a consideration as well. <clears throat> but when you're just starting out, I mean, you're brand new at all this. I have a friend who just got a hot tub and they chose chlorine as the sanitizer of choice. And, you know, I really feel like they set themselves up to fail because you have so much to learn. Like this chemistry stuff probably sounds overwhelming like crazy already. And I'm only just touching on the surface of it. And then you go and choose hard mode by choosing chlorine as your sanitizer. Do yourself a favor and let's start with bromine. And at a future point and a future time, if you want to drain your, your spa and switch to chlorine as your sanitizer of choice, that's up to you. Uh, but for now, let's just get this thing usable. And bromine is the easiest way to do that. Two parts per million to five parts per million. The floater with the pucks in it that you're going to put inside of your hot tub is good for maintaining your sanitizer level. You want to add some powderized bromine directly to the water to initiate or to climb that initial amount and achieve that two to five parts per million of sanitizer. So now that we've got all of our chemical parameters set, we set the alkalinity, then we set the pH, then we set the calcium hardness, and now we have bromine at two to five parts per million. Technically speaking, you're ready to use this hot tub.